Now, exchange really is about all organisms, whether they are a single celled organism, okay, single celled organism, or something really, really big. I think it started off well and kind of tailed off there, but anyway, you know what I'm talking about, okay? So from the single celled organism, okay, all the way to something big, bigger organisms, they need to exchange. What do they need to exchange? Well, they need to exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide, okay? Why do they need to do that? Well, because the thing that connects those two together is respiration. So all cells, in order to make ATP, which is their energy, okay, is the form of energy that cells can use. In order for them to be able to produce that, they need an input of oxygen as well as glucose, and they are going to be producing CO2. Okay, as well as water. So it's respiration is essentially the reason why cells need to keep exchanging gases because they, they need this oxygen continually and they're producing CO2 which they need to remove. So most people kind of get that oxygen is needed for respiration but I think that there's an important aspect of this which maybe goes a little bit under the radar, which is the carbon dioxide side of it. Like most people can explain why cells need oxygen to carry out respiration, but why do we need to remove CO2? So just going to spend a little bit of time talking about that. Now CO2 needs to be removed because CO2, when it dissolves in the fluids of living organisms, it forms an acidic substance. Okay, so if you don't remove CO2, then the cellular environment becomes acidic and essentially the pH drops. And if the pH drops, then um, the cells, proteins, begin to denature. Okay, so that's really, you know, the main reason why you cannot allow the CO2 to build up. It's fine um, having lots of oxygen and being able to carry out lots of respiration, but then if the CO2 isn't removed, then pH drops, proteins denature, and then soon, soon the process of respiration will have to stop because all the enzymes that are carrying out respiration and all the proteins needed to, to keep that process going, they will start to denature because of the buildup of CO2. So it's very important to, to understand that as well as the cells, all cells of living organisms requiring oxygen to make that reaction happen for of respiration, similarly, the CO2 needs to be removed. And so, we go to the cell. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll just, yeah, so when we have a cell, when we have a cell, what's happening is that, let's begin with respiration. So, respiration is happening. So, as respiration happens, oxygen gets used up. So, the oxygen concentration in the cell starts to get lower, okay? So the oxygen concentration goes down. Meanwhile, as respiration happens, the CO2 concentration inside the cell starts to increase. Now, what's happening is we're starting to get a concentration gradient because as the, CO, as the oxygen concentration inside the cell gets lower as it gets used up in respiration, it becomes lower than the outside of the cell. So the oxygen concentration outside of the cell suddenly now is higher than the inside of the cell. So now we have a concentration gradient. Now that concentration gradient means that oxygen will diffuse down that concentration gradient from the outside of the cell in 
to the cell. And so as the cell uses up oxygen, it lowers the concentration inside the cell so that it's lower than the outside. And then the oxygen concentration outside, because it's higher, it begins to diffuse inside the cell. And so the cell gets its supply of oxygen. Similar but opposite, as respiration occurs, carbon dioxide builds up inside the cell. As the CO2 concentration builds up inside the cell, it becomes higher than the outside of the cell. And because of that, CO2 then conveniently diffuses out of the cell. And thus, the cell gets a supply of oxygen and it, it gets to remove the CO2. Okay? But the, these aren't active processes. These are passive. This is diffusion. And I hope that you can, I hope you followed how it's because of respiration that we have those two concentration gradients. Because of respiration, the, the cellular concentration of oxygen is really, really low, much lower than the outside, so oxygen diffuses into the cell. And because of respiration, the, the CO2 concentration of the cell is much, much higher than the outside of the cell, and therefore CO2 diffuses out. And this is fine for a single cell, right? So as we have addressed, it is diffusion. It is diffusion that is the process that supplies the cell with oxygen and allows the cell to get rid of its CO2. And that is diffusion, okay? The problem is that diffusion is only affected, is only effective over short distances. So diffusion is only effective over short distances, okay? Because it's the random movement of particles, okay? You can, you can random, if by just randomly moving through your house, you'll eventually make it out into the road. But randomly moving is not going to get you all the way to the shop or to college or, or wherever, to school. Okay, random movements won't get you very far. So in the same way, um, diffusion is only effective over very short distances. So while diffusion is fine for a single cell, where the diffusion only has to take place over a very short distance, diffusion is not okay. Diffusion is not sufficient over greater distances, i.e. for larger organisms. Okay, um, so one of the concepts that we use to explain that is the idea of the surface area because diffusion has three diffusion has three factors that affect it okay first is the diffusion distance the second is the surface area to volume ratio and the third is the concentration gradient Okay, the concentration gradient. Now the concentration gradient has to be big, the surface area to volume ratio has to be big, and the diffusion distance has to be as short as possible. Those three ingredients give you a sufficiently high rate of diffusion. Okay, but for a cell, for a cell, now if we're looking at a small, a small organism that is as small as an, a cell, for example, its surface area to volume ratio is high, okay? Its diffusion distance is super, super low, and the concentration gradient is quite high as well. Okay, so if that cell m meets the criteria for effective diffusion. If we look at something as big as an elephant or any kind of multicellular organism, what we will find is that relative to its volume, its surface area, so the surface area to volume ratio will be low. Okay. Um, all the cells are not equally, um, all the cells are not near to the surface. So the diffusion distance, so the distance diffusion distance, the diffusion distance is also going to be very high. 
okay? Because there's a lot of cells not near to the surface of the organism, so th th we're requiring the diffusion to happen over a very, very long distance, okay? So that's not going to be enough. Uh, so that, that's going to be not in the favor of a high rate of diffusion either. So we've got the surface area to volume ratio, which is low. We've got a diffusion distance, which is high. And we've got concentration gradients. We've got concentration gradients, which are going to be very low. Okay. And therefore, uh, we're, we're going to have a buildup of carbon dioxide inside this organism. And therefore, the concentration gradients are not going to be very high. Okay. So... So we can see that for a large organism with a low surface area to volume ratio, with high diffusion, with you know great diffusion distances, we are going to have an insufficient rate of diffusion. Okay, and that's uh, like I hope that we understand that. If if we are to explain it further, okay, let's let's divide this elephant up into cells. Right, now let's just say that we're now looking at all the cells of the elephant. Gross underestimation, obviously. Okay, but what we're saying is that, yes, there's some, like, there's, there, there could be diffusion happening around the surface area, around or across the surface of the elephant, though, and given the thickness of elephant skin, I would, I would, really doubt that okay but then if we start to look at the organism uh, at the cells at the center of the organism they are very very far away from where the oxygen is available so the oxygen is available there right but it's not available in the center okay so there's lots of oxygen there but none in the center similarly there's lots of CO2 in the center, right, because of all those respiring cells, there's lots of CO2 in the center of the organism, at the core of the organism, if you will, right, but it's a very great distance for that CO2 to move towards the surface of that organism. So I hope we can see how diffusion is not going to work for larger organisms. It's not going to be effective, or the rate is going to be too low. That's what you should say, the rate of diffusion is inadequate still happening right still happening it's just insufficient for for the usage of oxygen and for the production of co2 so the rate of diffusion is inadequate for this organism okay so i just wanted to set that up um, that's all i want to cover in this hopefully it made sense hopefully you followed and now let us move on to year two so this is where we shift over to year two hopefully if you're a year two student this has been some helpful revision but now we just move on to year two and in the next episode i'll just try and continue on from that story okay so in the next so here, what, today what we set up is why organisms need um, specialized exchange systems, okay? And what we set up is this idea of what they need to exchange, and secondly, why they need to exchange it, and then why is it that for some organisms they need a specialized exchange system. And so in the next um, episode, we'll move on to exchange systems. Cool?